Hello everybody. I've got a follow-up video for my path of building on the Dead Eye Wander. I'll just be going over some of my thoughts and the early leveling experience um, while talking over this uh, map demo. I'm just going to run a shore for map completion here. Right now I'm level 87 and as of recording the build feels pretty good. I've been pretty satisfied overall with the progress. Uh, that being said, the early leveling experience was pretty rough for me. Up to Act 3, I was leveling with Kinetic Bolt linked to a Prismatic Burst. I don't recommend this to anybody. Um, probably just level with bows or a spell if you're going to do that up until Act 3, where you can go to Cioso to get Power Siphon, which is what I did. That being said, it still felt pretty bad once we got our Power Siphon set up in Act 3. Um, and we just don't have enough t attack speed. And I think another part, I don't know if this is an undocumented change, but they changed the animation of Power Siphon. So now the character is raising their arm up into the air to cast projectiles. And there's a pretty noticeable backswing lag that, has, that comes with this um, animation. At least that's how I, I felt. Yeah, I don't think... The build didn't really feel playable, I would say, until you get your first Ascendancy point, which you can put into Tailwind. And this fixes most of like the attack speed issues, but it still does feel a little bit clunky, uh, even with the Tailwind at max stacks. The damage was still pretty lacking in like for Act 5. Um, and then in Act 6, I lucked out and picked up an Eclipse Solaris. Uh, this is a unique leveling wand that you can definitely use for this sort of power siphon uh, playstyle. This was enough to get us very comfortably to the end of Act 10. After this point, I don't think I was like dying at all. I wasn't really struggling. Well, the Wildwood Empowered Bobs are a different story, but they got nerfed uh, by GGG and I think they're a, little, a lot more manageable now. As for the Warden side of the Ascendancy, um, I took Oath early. I got it at the around Act 2 somewhere. And then I was able to snag the second Ascendancy point to get the Tinctures, I think, around Act 4 or the start of Act 5. Um, but I didn't really start noticing the tincture effect until I switched out my first one, which was kind of just a throwaway one. Initially, I had one with all hits can ignite, but I wasn't really getting much ignite damage. It was just there mostly for the lightning penetration. Now I'm running one that has all damage can freeze, and this has been really nice for our build since we're critting all the time and it gives us just another layer of survivability because most mobs aren't even able to act against this. Uh, in the video, I'm running a five link with Power Siphon and I haven't quality up our Power Siphon yet because I've been too lazy to repeat lab, but I'll get around to doing that soon. One of the links is green. Right now I'm running added cold damage uh, and there's a reason for that. Um, because I was testing some of the other green gems, notably Barrage. Barrage is interesting. It basically returns the animation to how most wand-based attacks look, so it doesn't have that raising up animation anymore. And it's a lot faster since, you know, it's Barrage, but um, the downside being that with how Power Siphon currently behaves, you can't really choose the target that your barraged projectiles go on, so it's still not very good as a single target, um, especially if anything else remotely shows up in your vicinity. However, I, I would arguably say that barrage can be used as a clear gem. It's not the best one, certainly, but um, it's not bad either. I'll probably be switching it for one of the standard blue-red colors uh, in the upcoming days. So the strengths of this build, I'd say that it's pretty good at just turning your brain off and running around, not having to aim at anything. 
um, which is perfect for me. I have steel skin on left click, so I'm really minimizing the amount of buttons we're pressing here. Um, you'll notice Hydrosphere is in my skill list. That was there just to apply exposure before I lucked out on getting um, an implicit for lightning exposure using an Icker. We do have uh, two slots completely empty. Right now I'm running no gems in the boots and the helmet. Initially I was planning to do the gloves, but I think having the plus 50 all res is just so much nicer for being at the gear cheaply. I won't go over all of the build stuff. Um, I'll link a path of building to my current snapshot of my character. Uh, so you can look at the gear there, but basically it's all pretty cheap gear. I think my net budget was like around 15C, mostly picking up pieces between 1 to 5C. The bubonic trail that I'm currently using I think cost me 5C, and then everything else was like 1, 2C. There's definitely a lot more room to grow for the gear. Um, I don't have an anoint yet, my amulet is terrible, and I am slowly working towards that Shroud of the Lightless, which will be, I think, the last unique we'll pick up before some of the end game stuff. That's about all I had to say for this update video. I think it's performing reasonably well so far, at least better than I expected. And there's more room to grow, so we're definitely going to be able to take it farther. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment. And I will be linking my snapshot path of building in the description of the video. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.